Hi, it's Michael from Better Marks in Maths, and this in this lesson I'm going to show you how to do decimal answers for the remainders in the short division sum. So starting with example one, how many twos in five? There's two, and with the remainder of one, what you need to do is put a point after the two and after the five, and then put a zero, and put that remainder of one there, and then you go how many twos in 10, and the answer is five. So how many twos in five? The answer is 2.5. Example two, how many threes in 29? So once again, it's going to have a decimal remainder and I'm going to set it up like this now. So and you can add as many zeros as you need. So how many threes in two? There's none, so I'm going to carry that two. And then how many threes in 29? There are nine threes in 27, so that means there's a remainder of two. And then how many threes in 20? There's six and there's a remainder of two. So if I put another zero and put that remainder of two, and it looks like it's just going to do, have a remainder of two each time I divide three into. So that means the next number is going to be a six. And in fact, it's going to be 0.6 repeating. And the way I want you to write that, if you don't already know, is to only write one, one of the numbers that's repeating and just put a bar on the top of it. That means that's equivalent to 9.666 and the sixes keep going forever. So that's a short way of writing that and you read it as 9.6 recurring. In example three, how many fours in 245? I'm going to set it up with the point zero and the point here. So how many fours in two? There's none, so I'm going to carry the two. How many fours in 24? There's six, none left over. How many fours in five? There's one, and there's one left over. How many fours in 10? There's two, and put down another naught, and two left over. And then how many fours in 20? There's five. So how many fours in 245? There's 61.25. So example four, how many fives in 269? How many fives in two? There's none, so I'm going to carry that two. How many fives in 26? There's five and one left over. I'm going to add a naught and put a point up there as well. And how many fives in 19? There's three. Three fives are 15, so that means there's a remainder of four. And then how many fives in 40? And the answer is eight and there's no remainder. So five into 269 as a decimal, the answer is 53.8. Example five, how many sixes in 715? So I'm going to set up a couple of noughts and the point like that. How many sixes in seven? There's one, one left over. How many sixes in 11? There's one and there's five left over. How many sixes in 55? Nine sixes are 54, so there's nine and there's one left over. How many sixes in 10? There's one and then there's four left over. And then how many sixes in 40? There's six. Six sixes are 36. So that means there's another four left over. And it looks like it's going to be that repeating pattern, which means the next one's going to be a six. And the sixes keep repeating. So the way to write this one, to write it as an exact answer, which would be 0.1666666 forever, but the short way of writing that is with just a bar on the bit that repeats. So 119.16 recurring. Example six, how many sevens in eight, four, two, two? How many sevens in eight? There's one with one left over. How many sevens in 14? There's two. How many sevens in two? There are none and carry that two. How many sevens in 22? There's three with one left over. So putting the point and the point and the zero. So one left over and I'm going to put three noughts here. So how many sevens in 10? There's one with three left over. How many sevens in 30? There's four, four sevens are 28. So that means there's two left over. And then how many sevens in 20? There's two. And there's going to be, so two sevens are 14, so there'll be six left over. And then you can kind of keep going for as much as you like. And these ones actually repeat, and I'll just actually do them all to show you. 
So how many sevens in 60? Seven eighths or eight sevens are 56. So that's going to be eight. And then there's going to be four left over. How many sevens in 40? There's going to be five. Five sevens are 35. So there's going to be five left over. And then how many sevens in 50? There's seven. Seven sevens are 49. And then there's one left over. And that's going to repeat the same pattern here because that's one and that means the next one I'm going to get is three left over. So this, these six numbers keep repeating when you divide any number by seven when it's not an exact answer or when there's a remainder. That's what you get. So if you wanted to write an exact answer, you would have put a bar over that whole thing like that and that shows that those six numbers keep repeating. So the next six numbers would be one, four, two, eight, five, seven and so on. And I only want to round this to three decimal places. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I want one, two, three numbers after the point. So what I do is look at the next one on the right of that third decimal place that I want. And because this is five or more, that means I round that two up to a three. So 0.143 to three decimal places. Example seven, how many eights in 9041? How many eights in nine? There's one with one left over. How many eights in 10? There's one with two left over. How many eights in 24? There's three with none left over. And then how many eights in one? There are none. Because you haven't used that one, there's one left over. So that one is the remainder which you carry to here. How many eights in 10? There's one with two left over. So put another zero and put that remainder of two there. How many eights in 20? There's two. Two eights is 16, so that means there's four left over. And then how many eights in 40? There's five, and that goes exactly. So how many eights in 9,041? The answer is 1,130.125, and that's the exact answer, meaning there are no more numbers after that five. Example eight, how many nines in 9194? So how many nines in nine? There's one. How many nines in one? There's none. So carry that one. How many nines in 19? There's two with one left over. How many nines in 14? There's one with five left over. So putting a naught and then there's five left over and put the point above that point. How many nines in 50? Five nines are 45. So there's going to be five and then there's five left over. How many 9s in 50? There's 5, so it looks like the 5 is going to repeat. So to show that, all you have to do is put a bar on top of this one and get rid of this 5 here, which I'll do. And so that's 0.5 recurring. So 10, how many 9s in 9194? The answer is 1021.5 recurring. So that's how you do decimal remainders. So the key is that you've really got to line the points up line all the numbers up correctly really and have a point there and just do your remainders in the same way that I've done them here. Don't worry about the point. All it means is that when there's a remainder from this nine, you just put it in front of the zero and not in front of the point or anything like that. So that's how you do these ones. And that's it for the series of how to add, subtract, multiply and divide for the better number skills program. Just wanted to make clear that when you're working out a sum like this, how many twos in five, this can be read as five divided by two. So you, it might be like that in a sum that you're doing, five divided by two, and you would just type this in on your calculator, five divided by two, and you would get this answer here. And you, could, you might see it as five over two, which could be five halves or two and a half as a mixed number. And if you had to change this into a decimal, you would just write this into your calculator, five divided by two. And the reason why you read this as how many twos in five is just to work it out. It's a lot easier to figure out how many twos in five for most students than to actually go five divided by two. It's exactly the same thing. It's just a different way of doing it. It's just to make it easy to figure out using short division to read it as how many of the one on the outside go into the one on the inside. 
So that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next one.